Welcome to HB Live number 44. We're in beautiful downtown LA where all the hipsters are, the coolest part of town, right Sally? Absolutely. Yeah. That's why we're here. And uh, we're with our special guest Sally Rogerson, who's a longtime friend of mine. We worked together in the 90s. We're going to talk a little bit about that. But most importantly, we're going to be sharing the incredibly versatile layered bob. And the reason why this haircut is so important is because so many other styles are built from it. And uh, it's also part of our HB shootout. I'm going to turn it over to Sally. She's going to get you started on the technique, and then we'll carry on the conversation throughout the whole haircut. So what's up, Sally? Hi, everyone. I'm thrilled to be here, and uh, thank you for joining us so much. I'm Sally Rogerson, and I have a hair education company called SR Education. Um, we are here tonight because we want to talk about the layered bob. It's super, super, super in fashion. Obviously, it's bobs, bobs, bobs in the salon at the moment. Uh, very important technique. It's a very classic technique, but depending on how you apply it and who you put it on, obviously it takes on a, a very, very, very different kind of feeling. And that really depends on the style of the client. Um, you can do this haircut on every type of client, young to old, classic to wild, and uh, I think it works on everyone. So. We are using this actually as a reference point for a competition that we're going to be uh, launching or have launched yesterday. We'll talk about that a bit more later, but I want to share with you first of all how I tend to do a layered bob and how I do this haircut. For me, in the SR Education cutting program, there is three ways of cutting a line, either in your comb, that's going to make it strong and clean, pressed against the skin, this is not necessarily one I use a lot because uh, you generally need a very, very, very perfect and good hairline to be able to do that. Uh, if you press the hair against the skin very strongly and someone has strong growth patterns, when you let go, obviously you're going to end up with kind of a wavy line. And then you can also work with it in the SR education um, approach through the fingers. If you cut through the fingers on a line, obviously you are going to get a little bit of graduation in there. But I think that that's very, very suitable sometimes for um, curly hair. Also for clients that want to bevel their hair under and work it with a round brush. So sometimes I will uh, work through my fingers on purpose to make it a little bit softer. I think the key thing with cutting a line is choose the approach that is suitable for you know the result that you want to achieve. I'm going to go a little bit more through my comb today. I might change it up. Sometimes I do a little bit of everything. Now the way I work with a line is close my scissors, scissors or shears. I prefer scissors. Oh, well, uh, oh here we go. All right, right. let's start there. Happen. This is a big point of controversy. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And I, I like to stoke the flames. That's why I brought it up. So in America. In America. People think that shears sounds proper and, and let's just say better than scissors. Correct. But in my experience in, yes. in England and in Europe, it's exactly the opposite. It's what you do to shear a sheep. Yeah. Well, here they say you use scissors to cut paper. Yes. And shears to cut hair. Which I is understand. one of those interesting yeah. things. That's why we need a global community yes. so we can all come together. But whatever you call them, scissors or shears, if you cut beautifully with them, like Sally does, you matter, get amazing right? results. Yeah. So guys, I want to encourage you to ask questions. Obviously, Sally's going to be sharing. She's got a wealth of information. Um, she's got a great bat history, background. We worked together at Sassoon in the 90s. And, um, but she's gone on to do so many great things, and we're going to talk about that as well. Mm -hmm. So let's have a look. So we've got Julie Klein, who's excited because she's doing a hands-on with you in Atlanta. Oh, yeah. So Ju Julie, if you have any questions now uh, about uh, what it's like to do a hands-on with Sally, that would be great. Hi, Julie. Share them. Yep. We have a lot of our regulars tuning in. We've got Joe and Patty. I'll be looking at the phone, guys. Don't get mad. I'm not checking my text messages. <laughs> you know, people get offended. But I'm always looking for questions, and we want to hear all your great questions for Sally. So, Sally, let's get back to this incredibly yes. important outline. Sure. So, what I'm doing, really, is really thinking about how I'm holding my comb. If you're holding it in your comb to cut, if you're holding it in your fingers to cut, you really want to see the spine of your comb, or for me, the spine of my fingers. If I tend to see, you know, the palms of my hands, then that means I'm usually flipping my hands up. That's a normal, which, huh? Yeah, well, it encourages the flip out. And yeah. if that's not what you want on your bob, 
then um, try and avoid that. Can you talk a little bit about her hair texture and how maybe that affects your choice of how you're gonna hold it? Does it play in when you look at, uh, is it Marissa? Marissa? So our beautiful model Marissa, her back of her head is great, but wait till you see the front, it's even better. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> but talk a little bit about, about the hair. Well, how do you choose the technique you're gonna use? <sighs> Very good. Um, I think it does definitely depend on the hair texture and density. For me though, personally, it's more about the style. It's like, what do I want it to look like? Do I want it to look looser and a bit more kind of shaken up? So if you want it looser and more shaken up... I would cut to... it through my fingers. So a little bit of tension, elevation, yeah. a little bit of toe, Softer. as we used to say, right? Yeah. Tension over direction and elevation. But through the comb, for you, is more blunt. Yes. Uh, we have a great question yes. from John Ritter. Um, and he's asking, are you using I feel like fine... I know him. Well, I think that was a famous actor, wasn't it, John Oh, Renner? is that what it is? Yeah, from Three's Company, which was a great show. Oh, I don't and know. That's what, what gave me dreams of California when oh, I was yeah? a kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but John Ritter wants to know, are you using the fine teeth or the wide teeth? Great the question, John. Thank you for that. Um, I use the wider teeth just to give a loose attention. If you use the fine teeth, I think it's good if someone's got, like, perfect hair. But how often do we get perfect yeah, hair in I was our chair? Say, does anyone have like no. So I tend to use the larger teeth of the comb on purpose. I honestly have too much tension in my hands. That's the truth. I kind of just break stuff. So wow, like, uh, like, like the incredible hug. Like Stone Cold. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're gonna tell a great story. <laughs> when I first met Sally, it was I think about '96 or '97. <laughs> We were both working for Sassoon. She was an incredible creative director in the so Creative you? Academy in, in London. And I got to go over as a guest artist uh, and work there, we work for Sassoon. We had a huge group of Japanese students who didn't speak any English. So we would just tell jokes the whole time and wait for the, at least I you would. You would do impressions. I would do impressions. And I was doing impressions of Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> Yeah, just to break it down and have fun. It was so it. funny. I think you had like two girls on each shoulder, like sat on there, yeah. and you were like kind of doing wrestling moves. Yeah, that's, it was brilliant. Yeah, Kuma. They called me Kuma. Remember <laughs> Kuma? Yeah. So again, that's that's a beautiful part of our craft: the relationships <laughs> that you build, the history. So again, I've been friends with Sally. We're going to catch up on all the great things that she's doing. We've got some good questions coming in. Head position. Mm, do you very keep good. the head straight up or do you bend it forward? Very interesting. For me, I do a little bit of both. I spent probably 20, 22 years with the head forward. Yeah. Um, I actually teach in my class with the head up. Yeah. Um, I prefer... It's a bit simpler with the head up. It's a, it's a bit simpler. I like to cut it a bit more where the client's going to wear it. But honestly, on this hair, I kind of like... I'm in the middle, to be honest with you. So sure. I don't want to get it all too messy through there. Let's talk about the head position a little bit. Because yeah. like when you say that, so... Obviously, it makes me think. So when the head goes forward, you have yes. to compensate a little bit as you're cutting, mm -hmm. right? So do you try to keep a little bit more in the corners when the head is forward? Exactly. And that's like, to me, SR education is all about trying to make things as efficient and simple and clean and straightforward as possible. Yeah. So to me, putting the head really far down adds right. another like element. Brooker, yeah, like, from 1976. I feel like that's just like, going to yeah. add too yeah. much. Um, because then I've got to think about, well, what's the head like now? What's it going to look like when it's up? It's like too many things. Right. So I prefer to keep the head up. So naturally, a natural position, you kind of cut yeah. what you get. If you put the head forward, you have to compensate. Exactly. So there was a great, another great question mm -hmm. coming in from Curtis Dutois. Mm -hmm. And he is wondering, are you planning on this being a little longer in the front or will it be a square bob? Very interesting question, thank you. I'm gonna keep it a little bit more square and that's why I've changed my section. So for me, I'm actually going to start to change my section, pivot around, and I'd like to stop there at the back of that hole, so a little bit more in line with the mastoid process. And the reason I do that is to create over direction on purpose. So I will tend to bring everything back and cut it square to the back of the head. So my sections do not mirror my outline. I'm doing that on purpose because by the time I get up here, that over direction will have happened. When the hair falls down in its natural position, I'll have an extra piece of hair in the danger zone. The danger zone is the ear and the emptiness there. That will give me extra piece of hair I can tap and I can loosen up so I do not get a hole. So my sections are gonna change they do not mirror my outline because I'm keeping it square. That's just my opinion. There's a million ways to cut hair, people. Yeah, 
Absolutely. And try it's to tr correct. try them all and see yeah. what works. And, and also to not get bored, challenge from time to time. You I do that? with my feet sometimes. <laughs> I'd like to see that. <laughs> the next is the lab number 45. Sally Rogerson cuts with her feet. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, back to the comb, because again, you know, a lot of these fundamentals are the most important questions. Yes. So when you said you're working with the wide side of the comb, can you show people how wide the mm -hmm. wide side of this comb is? Well, yeah, I mean, this is just, you know, regular um, SR Education wires pop cutting comb. Right. So for this one, um, you know, it's not that wide. We call it like medium. Yeah, medium. Fine, medium, and then that's that would really be fine. I'll go to that if wide. I've got crazy hair, uh, and if I've got like super fine hair, I might even go to that. But this is my usual go-to, to, to right. be honest with you. So the question was, do you always cut with the wide side of the comb, or are you just doing it here? Like um, uh, the question came in from Sarah Eels. Eels. Yeah, yeah. I try to pronounce people's names sure. right, but I usually get it wrong. Uh, but she wants to know, like, okay, she understands why you're using it, but do you yes. use it all the time? Or do you like a bit more tension when you're cutting? Yeah, I change it up depending on the hair density and texture. Um, honestly, what day it is. I'm not into rules. Uh, I like to just kind of do a little bit more what I'm feeling. But larger teeth when I need looser tension. Smaller teeth when I need tighter tension. I think that, you know, that, that made me think of something that I want to ask you. Because, you know, I know you very well from when we worked together at yeah. Sassoon. How have you changed as a hairdresser since you left Sassoon? You know, obviously we all love and respect the legacy yeah, of, course, of the yeah. there. We all come from it, all our great yeah. mentors were yeah, there. Yeah. But usually when you leave, like, you know, I got into razor cutting and yeah. I'm a very, very different. You were outrageous. Yeah, very different. But, yeah. but what about you? How have you changed? Very, or? very interesting. What I did when I left Sassoon, um, I, again, you know, have huge respect for, for being there. I wouldn't be doing my job right now um, without it. But for me personally, I have simplified myself. For those people that knew me there and knew me before, and you know this about me, Gerard. You were complicated. I right? was the person that put 500 sections in the top before we'd even started. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I do not do that anymore. I think I um, took that workshop. <laughs> I think a lot of people did. <laughs> I'm all about supporting the salon stylist. I'm all about trying to give them education and techniques that they can use every single day in the salon. And it's simple, it's efficient, it's quick, and it works. So that's what I do now. So metaphorically, and uh, that's probably not the right word, but I thought I'd say it. Makes but, you sound smart. Yeah, exactly. Um, I kind of cleared up my clutter. I simplified my technique. I simplified my approach. And um, less is more, right? Excellent. That's working for you. Let's talk a little bit about SR education. Because sure. Again, guys, if you have questions what she's doing technically, which is a beautiful, important thing, um, please ask them. But I think something else that's really interesting, because a lot of us, especially now, more and more of us are becoming entrepreneurs and business people, especially hairdressers, a lot of independent um, hairdressers were all business people. I remember a few years ago, you know, knowing you well, you had left so soon and you were going to launch something new. Mm -hmm. um, and you told me you were going to do a Kickstarter to raise sure. money. It might have been one of the first times I ever heard of it. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about how the Kickstarter worked? Yeah, absolutely. The Kickstarter, obviously kind of crowdfunding. I think people are a lot more familiar now with it, but back then, not necessarily. Um, you know, I had a dream. I wanted to make this program. I wanted to make it happen. I'm someone that likes to have ideas, but I like to follow through and actually make it come to fruition. And... Um, yeah, I was just determined. I did not have the money. I did not have anything to put into, um, you know, a three, four hundred dollar um, set, you know, in production. I'm very lucky because my husband's a producer, so, you know, we can get to a high quality using friends and that kind of stuff. But I did actually, um, I did actually start with a Kickstarter. We raised seventy-five thousand um, dollars on the first go around for the women's program. I think overall it probably ended up costing about 150000 you know, once you get everything through, which was still very good. But um, it was amazing. You know, I literally didn't take any classes, didn't do any classes for about two months, just went on the road. I felt like I was kind of campaigning to be like president or something. Just went on the road, did free demos, just talked about it, spent my whole life on social media. And, um, Nothing's changed. Yeah. And uh, it was, you know, really amazing. And like Heart Attack City, 
Yeah. God. Awesome. But you did it. You I did it. To be proud of it was amazing. Yeah. All right. So you're moving on to the sides. Correct. Obviously, it's a hugely important part. I just want to say, yes, Michelle Cervantes, this is a, right now it's a blood cut. Sure. She's getting in her outline, but then she's going to layer. So stick around for oh, that. Oh, I'm going to layer. The layering is going to be amazing. Yeah. Um, so tell us how you carry on to the sides. How do so you coming that through, whole... yeah, into the sides. For me personally, I'm keeping it super, super, super loose. I'm hardly touching it. Um, so that's the big thing. You've got to allow for the ear, obviously. For me personally, I like to still cut through my comb if I'm doing the sides um, and the back the same. Now, if it touches the collar, then I tend to turn the head. So if it touches the collarbone and below, I tend to turn the head. If I do not touch the collar, it's just clearing here, then I will go through the comb or my fingers I don't really go on the skin through that side area. I'm closing my scissor. I'm feeding the hair through. And the big thing for me is to not just tap over the ear. I see a lot of people just doing a bit of this. You know what I mean? And it doesn't do anything. Yeah, like, it just looks good. Yeah, you've got to push it a bit more. Now, I really push tap it. around. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I really tap behind the ear because this is the problem area. This is where the empty space is. So I really loosen it up there. Then I loosen it up over the ear and then the front's not such an issue. So that's kind of my process. So if so many of our friends and community members watching, which is great, Gloria Per Paris, who I just saw in New Orleans. I she know says her. hi. Yeah, yeah. she's in the Galvanez Network. Yeah. And she was in New Orleans at Serious Business. Hi, Gloria. Business. Hi, Gloria. I told you I'd be with Sally. Uh, yeah. yeah, and lots of love coming yeah. in from, from everyone. Um, they really Hi, appreciate everyone. the education. We had a question. Yeah, I just wanted to say, like, if, it, if people are getting benefit from this, please share it because it makes a difference. Yeah, guys, if you hit the share button um, on while you're watching this, it'll go out to your whole network and more people can see. You know, we do these HB lives sometimes three, four times a week, so we want as many people to benefit as possible. We did have a question coming in about what product you're using in the hair. Very nice. It's always a big question that comes in. Do you cut yeah. with product and why? What I work it? with Devonis. I like to cut with um, product in the hair sometimes. I'm using the Day Day, which is more of a light leave-in conditioner, you know? So, so this yeah, this one here, the Hair Mist. And um, yeah, so I like to cut with product in. Some people hate it. You can see this one is well used. It must be popular in the salon. Very here. popular. Yeah. Day, day, all day. So using a little bit of product to keep it damp and uh, you prefer that to just constantly spraying with water or? A little bit of both. Depends on the density, the texture, but more than anything, the condition. She does have a little bit of highlight work in there, so you know. You know, Sally, if you, you know, so many more people are joining right Sorry. now. Um, if you could review generally why you're cutting through the comb rather than your fingers. We had a question come in from Vi. Yeah. Just a little review because yes. as the people join, sometimes they miss the beginning. Of course. So for those of you that have just joined us, thank you so much for joining. We are doing a bob. I'm doing the outline now pretty quickly because I do want to go into the layering. I'm working through my comb mainly just because... Um, you know, she has kind of quite straight, a little bit finer hair, and I feel like I need to get a little bit more bluntness through there. So that's why I'm cutting through, um, through the comb. And I've just chosen that because I like the effect of it. You can also be cutting through your fingers. You can also be cutting on the skin, but obviously around the ear through the skin is very tricky. Okay, you have a friend watching. Oh, wow. Danica Schaefer. Yeah. Yeah, she's saying hello. Oh, so hi. say hi. Hi, Danica. <laughs> Danica's watching. Is she a hairdresser or? She is a hairdresser. Okay, awesome. That's cool. She's, a good friend she's like, what are you doing? Yeah. Uh, she's awesome. my client. Yeah. Okay, great. So Sally, again, is she's getting in her outline here, the perimeter. She's working through the wide tooth of the comb, as she explained. And then you're going to be going into some layering. So, yes. you know, sometimes people ask, you know, if you're going to be layering it anyway, yes. why is it so important to have a, a precise outline? Can you just bang it in in one section? Yeah, absolutely. Just of course you can. <laughs> you can do whatever you You're not supposed to say that. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're supposed to say absolutely not. It you depends what time it is on a Saturday, doesn't it? Just to be honest. Hey, that's an honest answer. Okay. I like that. So definitely, I think that, um, you know, for me, I'm doing a layered bob. You know, bob is about precision. A bob is about, um, you know, it kind of looking correct and falling in the correct way. Uh, the way I'm going to layer this uh, haircut is I am going to leave weight in the outline. So therefore, the outline is going to be intact, so it will be seen, you know. What I have done as a concession to working in the salon 
because I'm in the salon, right? I've taken away a horseshoe section on the top. Yeah, we had some questions earlier about, yeah. you know, why you did that. I figured we'd yeah. get to it. So normally what I would do is I would cut off of whatever parting that client's going to wear. But honestly, if I know I'm going to lay that top area, you know, that's what I would do as like a little bit of a shortcut in the salon. I wouldn't bother cutting all of it because I know I'm going to take enough hair out where it's not going to fall into the outline. So there's kind of no point. Do you sometimes vary the size of this horseshoe depending yeah. on the amount of layers or mm -hmm. the hair texture? Really good question. Um, I have yes. good questions. I know, thank yeah. you. Uh, for me personally, in the SR Education Program, we always go off of the round of the head on the horseshoe for a layered bob. And also, I tend to go the round of the crown. So I'm just going to turn around through here. The round of the crown through here. Now, that does feel quite high. But for me personally, when I'm layering the back and I'm using the back area as a guide to layer the top, I feel like this really works with the correct distribution of weight and I feel like it makes it really kind of work. If my horseshoe goes lower, it sometimes ends up too short over the crown right. and it just makes the whole balance of the weight incorrect. Wonky, as, Wonky. We, as we said. Wonky. Yes. Can we have one more great outline question? Super. From Alex Humans, who's a longtime hair brain supporter, yes. and we always appreciate that. If you were cutting a much steeper, mm -hmm. kind of A line or triangular yes. line, would you cut the angle in or would you use more over direction? Yeah, very interesting question. I would cut the angle in. For me personally, if I'm doing a more triangular or A line shape, then my sections would mirror and I would go all the way through. So in the SR education program, if we're doing square, we cut the back first and then the sides because we feel like we need that extra bit of, you know, leeway there to keep some weight over the ear and not get a hole. If I'm doing more triangular, then I tend to section all the way through and my sections would mirror. I would also cut my angle in as opposed to over direct it back. But, you know, that's always a, that's always a very interesting um, Thing, you know, but like I said before, there's many ways to cut hair, and I feel like they're all correct. Even that guy with the sword and the fire, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's his thing. Yeah, we've got you know, we've got a really intense question coming in from Sarah Eels, which I, I always appreciate. That. Yes. She said, you know, she trained a lot in her fi final year on using disconnection yes. um, to create extra versatility and originality, mm -hmm. and then she moved on to working in a higher end salon where they told her disconnections are old school <laughs> and not on trend, wow. and to forget them. Wow! I was then taught to then connect my cuts again using an example of A squared C circle, the Sassoon way, mm -hmm. which then obviously led to some confusion on my creative ability and intuition. Mm. What are your feelings on this? Very interesting. To me, disconnection is the fourth technique. Why on earth you wouldn't use it in the salon is just bonkers to me. I've got to be honest. Um, well, just, anyone that makes blanket statements is limiting you. Yeah, oh, I don't like old, anything don't that's do limited. That. Yeah. I'll do anything to yeah. that person. I will, yeah. And it's true. I'll yeah. cut with anything. Yeah. Any, any tool or any it's technique exciting. can be used But well. that's creativity, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I don't want those limitations. I think that disconnection is a very important part of salon life, 100%. And um, it's just choosing the right thing to do. Choosing when to connect, when to not connect, you know? Like when I was first starting out, I wanted to disconnect everything. Always, yeah. right? So do you. Either on purpose or not. <laughs> or not. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you get to a certain point where you feel confident enough to even just do something simple and stand by it, don't you? You know? Okay, so this is an important time. So da -da 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 -da. now we're going to get ready for the oh, layers. Yeah, the layers. So tell us everything that you're thinking. So many, many ways to do layering. I think um, this was definitely a haircut for me that was a little bit tricky. What length to cut the layers? If you cut your layers too short for the outline, you're going to get the flip, you know? So if you want the hair to fall under, then you definitely need to think about making sure that the, your layering length is correct for the outline. So that's the key thing here. We want to maintain the perimeter and the outline. We want to maintain the weight through there. So I have to be very careful. For me personally, how I do a layered bob is I'm going to come off of the head um, more at 90. So I'm going to kind of think about my comb coming off of the head because of where I've sectioned off the horseshoe It works for me, you know, it works It falls in really nicely and I allow the weight to drop out below the occipital bone 
So that's how I do it. I find a lot of people, if they work with more of a straight up and down layer, they often get like a ledge on the top and they have to go back in and work it afterwards. So whatever works for you, this is just my approach. From uh, my program, this is Haircut M2. So it's in the medium series and it's the second haircut. I'm gonna let this drop out. And the biggest thing that I did not know for many years in my career is- Drum roll, you, please. <laughs> the biggest thing that you did not know was- That you didn't have to cut that much hair off in the layers, right? I always thought a layered bob, you gotta cut lots of layers and cut a lot of hair off. Uh, it took me quite I a long time. You you well, I wish you had. It's just how much of the corner do you want to knock off? But That's I used to always overlayer it. Like when I was an assistant, when I was like 17 or 18, I used to overlayer everything yeah. when I was doing my layered bobs. All right, so here we go. So you're literally coming above, I would say now you're like mid to high occipital yep. to start your layering. Yep. So you're letting a decent amount drop out. Yep. Yeah. Uh, especially on this lens because it's going to flip out otherwise, you know? Okay, so Daniel Benson is coming to Vegas. Mm, wow. He said it's only been How a few exciting. days, but I miss your energy and knowledge. Thanks for sharing. Hi. Danielle Benson, I'm sorry, Danielle. Oh, Danielle, that's yeah. a different person. Yeah. <laughs> and Alex Newman says, oh my God, I love that dress. Oh. We love that positivity, <laughs> Alex, thank you. Thank you. This, this feed has been great, all the questions coming oh, in. Oh, thank love you, everyone. Support. That's what we love, that's why we do this. We want to connect everyone together, yeah. share information. Tony Sadiq, who's a, a great friend. Oh, I friend. love Tony. Yeah, these are all our mutual friends all coming yeah. in saying hi. Yeah, hi Tony. Okay, so you got the guideline yes. in. Now what's the game plan? Very interesting part of the haircut. What I like to do personally is I like to walk around the head until I get to the mastering process and then everything is going to come back and it always has to be over directed back to because where that hairline goes to. Yeah. So kind of flush with the head. Yeah, yeah. otherwise people are going to get a hole. You take one step further, right? And you over direct it to there, you've got a hole because you're in the middle of that empty space. Yeah, you'll I, lose the outline. Yeah, I personally don't bring everything back to a wall because I feel like you get too much of a corner there and those clients are like, what's this big heavy stuff through here, you know? So this is the way that I approach it and this is how I teach it. We walk around coming back to the previous section You'll stop at the mastoid, bring everything back. So. Okay, so let's let's see how that happens That's now. That's my feeling. So vertical sections and you're over, now it doesn't go all the way back to the first section, right? No, it goes back to the previous. Goes. So two back to one, three back to two, onwards like that. And then when you hit that round of the head, that's when it all goes back to yes, one place. Station, right? So maybe that'll be the fourth or fifth section. Yeah, usually five, right? Yeah, yeah. Average. That's how we used to say it, to the yeah. previous and yeah. then everything back to five. Yeah. And that'll help you keep the outline all the way through so you don't get a hole. Correct. Okay, so again, again, lots of people are just joining in, so they want to know about head position. Oh, good. So as you're layering, do you like to push the head forward a little bit? No, or do I don't really care about the head position too much when I'm layering, um, apart from the first section. Once I've got my first section in, I just like it natural upright position. Well, After what? that, wait, wait, wait. why is so important on the first section? Because I want to see how it's going to fall. So that helps you see yeah. uh, the, how it falls. Yeah. Uh, I guess, yeah. So uh, if the head's down, it skews everything, doesn't it? So when you put the head up, it looks different. So really for me, it's just all about getting that first one in and then following it. That's the key thing is people kind of get off track, don't they? Now, as you work around sometimes towards the back of the ear, do you also maybe rotate your hand a little bit? Or do you like to keep it very, very square up and down? Um, no, I don't keep it square. I keep it a little bit more of an angle. Yeah, so that kind of protects the outline a little bit more. Yes, exactly, yeah. And it's kind of a little more organic in a way. Yes. Yeah? You're just kind of moving a little bit as you get towards I the I definitely corner. walk around, for sure. So lots of love coming in. Jocelyn says, looking great, Sally. Loves, love watching what you do. Oh, lots of thank you, Jocelyn. Love watching you do it. Nice. Yeah, they're all voyeurs. Ooh. The whole world are voyeurs Ooh. now. Well, you must, you know, I mean, to do what we do and cut in front of people, we yeah. must be, what's the opposite of a voyeur? An exhibitionist. Oh, really? That's us, we're exhibitionists. I think I'm an introvert. An You're extrovert. an extrovert. Well, I'm an introvert too. <laughs> Strangely, you will never believe I don't, this. I'm going to go and stand here, yeah. Brandy, so I'm sorry, but I'm putting yeah. my back on Well, you can come around here. Yeah. I am the uh, extroverted introvert. I'm with you. I understand. People yeah. always think that you're really extrovert. Anyway, that's another comment. You just have to know when to turn it on. Yes, But there's exactly. nothing, nothing makes me happier than to just sit home by myself. Oh, and yeah. Book, you know? For sure. All right, we've got people coming in from all over the world, what? which is great. 
Uh, Scarlett is watching from Mexico. Hi. I saw someone before from uh, Poland. Wow. Which is what's great about this. Any UK people, they're in bed. Anybody from the UK? You know, you know, people stay up all night and they can't sleep. The night owls watch while we do this. Oh, we're okay. in LA, if anybody's just joining. Hi, we're in uh, We're in Los Angeles, downtown LA. We're yep. in a studio. Do you want to talk a little bit about this studio? It's a friend of yours. Um, yeah. Salon, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Ashley Flores. Thank you very much, Ashley. We appreciate you. And um, it's a beautiful little studio, Davines uh, studio here in downtown LA. Is that gold on brand? Gold on brand. And um, they have a beautiful little space, a little kind of a retro vibe. I really like it. Very creative. Um, and I think that that's the way that a lot of salons are going, particularly in LA and California, isn't it? There's a lot of smaller, cool boutique kind of spaces yeah it's just the way of the world it's you know people are like how why is this happening to our industry yeah it's happening everywhere yeah people that do computer work and yeah. people that do literally everything are becoming more independent and finding yeah. independent spaces they want uh, to put their own music on they want to do what they want to do yeah. they don't want to be told what to do and we just have to learn how to work with it in our industry yeah if you have any questions come in that you think are great let me know um of course everyone is telling us where they're coming from all over the country nice yeah josh lamonica tuned in Representing the UK, Josh is going to be joining us and teaching. What's up, Josh? Perfect. Hi, okay. Josh. So now we want to talk a little okay. bit about the HB shootout. So oh, yes. Sally's now working onto the second side, yep. exactly the same way. Sure. She's cutting her line, protecting her outline, over directing back. Now, those of you, a lot of people are loving what Sally's doing and loving the education. We've got something amazing for you that we want to talk about. It's Sally Rogerson's um, SR Education Hair Happening in Hair Las happening. Vegas. That's so great. tell us a little bit about this, and then we'll tell you how you can win a ticket to go. All right? Unfortunately, no travel is included, but this it's $550 for the whole event. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we have decided to put on our own Hair Happening. We love all the big shows. You know, we're not... Just being snooty and rude, but uh, sometimes it's kind of quite nice to just do your own independent thing. So we've decided to put on our own hair happening. We have all of our friends coming, you know, people that we really love and love to work with. Um, and, you know, Davinus as well is one of my sponsors, also Joyful. And it's a really just a nice opportunity to come together. There's a lot of fabulous big hair shows going on, and I appreciate all of them. We just wanted to do something a little something bit more kind of cool well, and What's your vision? Like, what's your vision for it? Um, what is the hair happening? I think the hair happening is just the ability to, um, you know, kind of share information, see different types of people. And um, there's going to be lots and lots of different classes. There's going to be, you know, all sorts of hands-on classes, demonstration, trends, uh, but friends coming in from London. Who are some of the people that are coming to, to so teach we, alongside of you? Well, we also have we have the SR Education team that are going to be there. We also have an evening big hair show, and we have Charlie Price coming, who's um, Ooh, amazing. Yeah, I love him. Uh, we also have Dennis Cooper, who's a good friend of mine and a very amazing editorial stylist from Vegas, yep. from Atelier Square. So a lot of his work. That's a great salon. A yeah, lot of great absolutely. I've been working with them for a while. So it's really just a case of bringing a lot of people together that I admire. Awesome. Um, we also so have like Mitchell Cantrell. So this is like a realization Kentrell. for you to get everyone to come together. Yeah, okay, That's awesome. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We also have barbers coming in. We have Linda Ha coming in from Canada, who owns Barber Ha, really beautiful um, men's barbering salon in Edmonton. We um, have the whole team. We have Sophie Dale coming in. We have Kenny Reed coming in. We have some amazing colorists. Also Naomi Knight. She is the one of the lead colorists from Daviness. She's going to be doing a hands-on class. And we also have Eric Hagen, who is, you know, one of those kind of really interesting you know, Instagram stars, does beautiful balayage and beautiful work in LA, super humble. He was, a lot of these people, Gerard, go way, way back to being um, cosmetology students with me. Awesome. So I kind Great. of brought in my people. We're definitely going to talk about this more. Yeah. We have a lot of questions happening okay. about what's sure. going on on the what's top. So the top? we're going to now, she just did one side, but now we can see it on the other side. Randy, let's make sure everyone sure. can see this. And we'll let Sally explain exactly what's happening. And then we'll get back to the hair happening. Okay. So for me, um, the back area, let's just talk about the back for a second. Go back to that. The back area, because I walked around the head when I was doing my layering, if I cross-check the back, 
I always want to make sure that I'm cross-checking over my fingers because when I pull it up, it should be curved and it should be rounded. I see so many people, and I'm sure you do, Gerard, that cross-check like that, but I didn't cut a square shape, you know? So, of course, it's not going to look correct. So I'm going to lift the hair up, cross-check. I kind of bend my knees and stand up into it. Cross-check over my fingers, and I should be a little bit rounded. Because I'm a little bit rounded, when I come to this top area, um, my finger angle, I'll turn around to make it easier for Randy to see. Um, my finger angle, when I come up to here, is a little bit more rounded when I cross-check because of the back area. Now, when I come through into the top, I am actually going to make my fingers more square and flat through the top area. And the reason for that is I'm creating a little mini disconnection here where it's weak and where clients, you know, worryingly can get a bit of a hole through that front area. So that's why I'm doing that. My finger angle has changed. I'm connecting to the middle, but my back area drops off. My top area stays square. So okay, a couple, couple great questions yeah. coming in as you work through the top. Sure. So those sections through the crown, were they pivoting or were they just vertical? No, they were vertical and walked around rather okay. than a full pivot. Yeah. So they didn't just pivot like from one spot. Like sometimes Correct. people call it a pivoting radial. Yeah. So it wasn't a pivoting radial, no, they were more around. moving around. Yeah. Do, you fuck, do you have any input on why one would work as opposed um, to the other? Well, I think for me, it still takes a little bit more weight out if I don't pivot. If yeah. I pivot, sometimes it gets lumpy behind yeah. the ear. It makes you want to pull things back more. Yeah. It's like an anchor. So moving, you know, Moving is going to give me more of a vertical section, which removes weight. So that's good. Okay. Yeah. Now, so generally, if you pivot, you tend to find things heavier. If the sections move along a little bit, you can take yes. a little more weight out. I think Correct. That, and even in graduated bulbs and stuff, sometimes people pivot off from one spot. Yeah. And it gets very thick. Really and heavy. thick. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now this is another great, great question. Kelly Reed um, Zitter. She likes to know what if your client wears a side party. Very interesting. Yeah. Great question. If um, I'm working on a side parting, and this is haircut M2 from the SR Education Comprehensive Cutting Program, and we share that on my virtual classroom, I show you how to do a side parting. So side parting, we tend to cut more square on the heavy side, and a little bit more rounded and curved on the light side. It's very difficult, I think, when you're doing layering and to get the balance right. And I always imagine if a client, if we cut it more square across the top, but a client actually takes more of a side parting, think about what it looks like. If I cut it square across the top but my parting was on this side, it tends to look like that. So I'm just trying to right that ship. So I'm trying to square it and round it. And that's what I would do on that. Do, I mean, do you sometimes just cut it all symmetrically, like kind of like you've done here? No, she seems to be pretty naturally to the yeah. center. But do you sometimes cut it all symmetrically and then customize it when, when after you blow dried? Mm, not so much for yeah? me, okay. but uh, I can see why you would. Okay, so you tend to, you, if they were a real deep side parting, you customize. Yeah. Okay, so we have a question from um, yeah. Julie Noteboom Klein. She's been asking this for a while. Okay. So if the client wants less layering on the top, yes. What's the best way to do that when they have a deep side parting? Very good. Yeah. Uh, for me, I over direct further back. If I want more layering on the top, then I do not over direct quite as far back. I'll kind of come up or back maybe one section. So the more I want layering on the top, the less I will over direct back. So over direction for me helps me to design. Thanks for all the love, guys. Thanks, thanks for not being mean, because I'm not on my phone checking my text messages. Some people go, why is he always on his phone? I'm working here. I'm trying to help Sally. So thanks. You know, <laughs> I, I, I feel very sensitive one time. Oh, someone got, yeah, someone got very Aww. upset that I was on the phone, but here everyone's saying love. So here's a really important question from Nina sure. Danner. Would you ever travel to Maryland? Oh, of course. I have done many times. Awesome. So you've been to Maryland. I know, I know. Like crabs? <laughs> crab Absolutely. Crab I've crab been things. there a lot of times. We've I've got to be Did you just come from somewhere? I did. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had one of those weeks where I was in a few cities in a few days. You know what I mean? I did. We did our two-day teacher training class in L.A. So that's, um, that was really amazing on Sunday, Monday. Got on a plane. I went to Chicago, Milwaukee, and Madison. Got home last night. And I'm back in LA again. <laughs> right on. You know, did you ever think when you started hairdressing, I'm sure you started as a teenager, like yeah. just like me, 
Did you ever think you would spend so much time traveling? Um, I hope. I think I hoped. Yeah, so well, because I rock, love traveling. The rock star hairdresser uh, thing. It never occurred to me. I yeah. mean, it wasn't until I got my apprenticeship at Sassoon that I realized you could even do you stuff. You could do like stuff. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Important part yeah. of the haircut. Let's get back to yeah, this. Uh, okay. So obviously, many many ways you can work the front area. I'm not going to do too much with her fringe area while it's wet. But I'm going to go through it slightly. Um, I do like to graduate fringes. So I'm lifting the hair up slightly, keeping my fingers just more square. Ultimately, I've got to decide how much of this area do I want to cut. Now, for me... It's just beautiful, so... Yeah, wanna... I want to kind of layer it, right? So I do not really uh, follow that right now. What I'm going to do is take diagonal sections, and I'm now going to lift up. So I came down for my fringe. I'm now going to lift up completely, and I know people get scared around here because the world's I'm like, scared. <laughs> how much hair's coming up? So instead of following this, I'm just going to come all the way up to the middle. So I'm looking for the middle of that. I'm going to take my hands completely round through there and then cut up. I like to cut a lot of curves backwards, so I like to kind of do a lot of that kind of thing. And then I'm going to bring the hair down, have a look see how that's doing because i went on that angle up it fills in this space so it's so like a loose face frame with kind of a connection yeah but more of a layer line. right yeah. so i came down to put in my fringe lens i came up to take the weight out because that gives me a disconnection here which is the area of concern right okay so you picked up some of the the fringe or the bang that's another one of our scissor oh, yes, shear yes, things yes. And you're, you're looking for the layers that were at the front and you're just lightly Yeah, connecting. so this fringe drops out. I'm going to find the top of it in there, cut a new guideline. So it does connect, but um, has a disconnection around some parts of the hairline. Okay, so a couple of important things. Everyone loves your dress, by the oh, way. Thank you. It's a winner. It's a winner. So... You can borrow it any time you want, Jerome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> next off, uh, we have someone watching from Thailand. Good wow. morning from Thailand. Hello. Ma'am is watching from Thailand. Nice. How now, are we you? had a really great question coming in from Natasha Marshall. Would you change anything in your cutting technique if you were dealing with curly hair? Does this cut <laughs> translate well to curls? Very good question. I love curly hair. If you look at the photograph that we have for our competition, yep. Yep. that's on more curly hair. I do exactly the same technique, but... Of course, I allow for changing up the tension. I allow for the different springs of the curls, but yes, I do. Um, sometimes I'll channel it a little bit more. What do you mean by channel it? So, for example, on this one, I could do it a little bit here, but I do this a lot on layered bobs. I'll cut cleanly, and then I'll take a nice thin section, and I'll just leave that section out completely. And then I'll go back to it. Um, what it does, and then I'll pick up my guide from here, ish you know get back into it and i'll just show you so i'll drop that back in and then i'll start to get these really cool different lengths in there which i think is really nice for a layered bob big question coming in from anthony de salvo are you over directing everything to one point as you do this well very good question i i was but now i'm channeling i'm not i'm coming off of it's kind of well one section forward i would say i'm kind of putting a new guide in in the middle again because i left that one out Okay, so Sally was talking about her hair happening, which is a two-day event that's going to be in Las Vegas. Um, people were asking about the date. Yes, the date is 26, February 26th 27. and 27th at the Golden Nugget Hotel. Yep. You can head over to the SR Education website to learn it's more about it. It's in conjunction with our friends at Davines. They're big supporters of yours. Yes. T tell us a little bit about your relationship with Davines. Well, I have a brilliant relationship with Davines. Uh, they are an amazing company. You know, I came from... Uh, working with a big, you know, corporation, and I think that when you do that, uh, it doesn't matter who it is, um, you know, sometimes you want to kind of work with a different type of company. This is very much more of a, I don't know, a little it's bit a more of a family company. company, company. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I enjoy that. I have a really super relationship with all of them. They're very supportive to me, and I am lucky enough that they support me with product, um, with support with SR Education, and uh, it's just a beautiful thing. I think they're an amazing company, and I identify with them. So they're helping to sponsor your hair happening. Yes. And in conjunction with Davines, Hair Brain Sally, SR Education, Sally Rogerson's company, we're actually giving away a ticket to attend this two-day event in Las Vegas. All you have to do 
is go to the Hairbrain Instagram for instructions on what we call an HP shootout. I know many of you guys are familiar with them. We do them all the time so you can win great prizes. And you have to do a variation of a layered bump. Yeah. You, you, might, already, yeah, you might already have one. Yeah. You, know, you don't have to do a new one. You don't have to do a photo shoot. Yeah. It can be Instagram worthy. You're, you're a nice work on, on that you're really proud of. Just go to the Hairbrain Instagram or the Sally Rogerson Instagram to learn about the rules. Yeah. Hashtag HB Shootout at mention Davines North America and make sure you follow all of us because you know that's kind of part of what it's all about. We want to make sure that we build our community, everyone's connected. At the end of the contest next week, Sally will look through all the entries and she'll pick her favorite and you'll win a ticket, a VIP ticket. So that means it's uh, you get everything. Backstage, yeah. you can come and assist if you want to. I'm not going to try and make you work too hard. You know, if you want to go and hang out somewhere, you can, but you have all access. You don't have to come and sleep in my room, but you know, you can kind of come well, you around. Can. You can. <laughs> Only if I can wear your dress. It'll be fun. Okay. I'm open, you know. So again, all you have to do to be in the HB shootout is find a great picture or do a great picture of a layered bob variation. Have you ever had a layered bob when your hair was long? Uh, kind of. My hair's so curly. <laughs> if you did like a layered bob, it would look like a shape. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, yeah. so let's get back to some of these great okay. questions. So you're on the side on the right and behind on the left, not really a question, just because saying Because I'm hello. cutting yeah. short to long. Oh, he's talking about your body position. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so let's talk That's about why. body position. I yeah. got it. Good I question. like to stand in the front and pull everything towards me when I'm doing this, but when I'm doing such an extreme angle, it's very difficult for me to do that. And I'm likely, if I get tired or it's Saturday and I'm an hour behind or something, I'm likely to cut into my outline and not get my angle right. So I don't normally stand behind when I'm working and push away from me, but in this situation I have to. You know, it's interesting body position yeah. because I think when you're learning, um, maybe you hear something or you learn something and it becomes like a dogma. Yes. And then you see someone do it a little bit different and, and you're like, you go, what? is it wrong? You know, what I've always said is, you know, it's like dancing. You, you might right. learn the classic steps, but then you kind of have to put your own swing on it. Yeah. As long as it doesn't compromise the shape and something great still happens. Yeah. And what's going to happen inevitably, if you've been doing this as long as we have, over 25 years, eventually your body, you need to hold things and do things differently, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to keep an open mind. So yeah. I would say whoever's teaching you, learn their positions and yeah. do your best to learn that discipline and then once you've got it down have an open mind to change for me the yeah. angle overtakes everything you know so the angle is the most important thing wherever i have to stand to do that but my classic work I, i'm still pretty strict on body position um but you know once you get into these angles it's a whole different story now you're seeing this cool texture because of those channels mm -hmm. and I'm, I've always been a real um, obsessive person about doing quite loose textured haircuts but cutting them cleanly. So that's always kind of been my passion. I think it's you know that about me. It's a contradiction, so yeah. how does that happen? Well, I like to cut things cleanly using my angles and using my brain and thinking about things, mm -hmm. but I do like things to fall soft. Yeah. It, this still gives the client a super hair color that grows out really, really well. Yeah. I'm not saying I don't freehand, I do, but if I can do it with my brain and my technique and my angles, it's just more exciting for me. That's just how I work. So the angles that's and all. the elevation can create the yeah. looseness exactly. rather than just... Yeah. That, you know, do you have anything against texturizing? No, some days I'll go for it, you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. Awesome, awesome. Oh, so yeah. great guys, you know, tell us a little bit more if you have questions coming in. We love to hear them. Um, Tara Siani maybe just joined us. She wants you to talk a little bit more about what you mean when you say channels. Yes, very cool. So um, channeling is a really beautiful technique originally from the 80s. And when you channeled in the 80s, it was very obvious, you know, it was really thick, short, long, you know, maybe... It was a channel. It was definitely very obvious. It might have been black and orange, you know. Uh, for me, channeling is a super technique, very modern, but use it a little bit more subtly now. So really what I'm doing is I'm working, for me, I'm working two sections um, with my shorter angle. And then I left one section very thin, I left it out and didn't cut it at all. And then I cut two sections, short to long, very strong angle, I left one out. So I've done that all the way through, and that's how I get this kind of really beautiful, loose, very kind of um, so, Marissa, textured So Marissa, you can see yourself in the mirror, how are you feeling? 
good. Yeah, yeah. Good. yeah. A change for you. Yeah, it's yeah. a nice change. Yeah, because yeah, it was like pretty it. much one length before with just yeah. some bangs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you got a little bit of more movement, and you can see that having a lot more body to it, huh? Definitely. So these are my longer pieces that have not been cut. So you can see them very, very easily through there. And I'm now going to go back and cut them, right? So I want to think of it almost as like a grid in a way, right? So the long pieces, this is the old haircut in there. So the long pieces I'm going to go back through now, keep them longer. I'm going to work short to long, and now I'll kind of come in and just point them a little I mean, bit. That really shows what you were doing, how you kind yeah. of like skipped, and you can see the short, that's what you mean by channels. Yes. And those you blend it out. It, right? So some of those layers still reach all the way to the bottom, and then you... Totally. Have, about how many channels did you do? Um, 4.7. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the kind of question you always get at this point yeah. about the versatility of the styling and how sure. do you plan to style it. Very nice. Um, I kind of like a lot of texture, I'll be honest with you, uh, at the moment, you know. I think sometimes we kind of pick up a brush too easily. So I'll probably put some sea salt spray in, something like that. The Davinus one is really phenomenal. Uh, I use that a lot. I also really like to use the pliable paste a lot as well, and that gives me a lot of texture. Um, so I'll probably do it with my fingers and a diffuser and try and get some texture in there. And then, um, but obviously you could blow dry it, iron it, whatever you want, really. Yeah, so um, do you think that, you know, natural texture is making a comeback right now? Big time, or, isn't yeah. it? It's 90s all over again. We're back in fashion. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> awesome, yeah. If you wait around long enough, everything comes back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You can start wearing all your old clothes again. I, I have never stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Remember I used to wear like my comb de garçon pajamas? Oh, yeah. People as yeah. you say, Are you, I'd be teaching it to soon. They say, are those pajamas? <laughs> I'm like, this is comb de garçon. They're very expensive. Yeah, very expensive yeah. pajamas. Oh, Nothing's yeah. changed. <laughs> Nothing's changed. So now what, what are you doing? Just, Just pointing into my longer pieces. You can still see my channels. So I'm trying to read the hair. I'm looking at it. I like to work from wet to dry. I see a lot of hairdressers out there spraying it down, spraying it down, soaking wet, you know? That's not me. I like to read the hair. That's what I enjoy about hair. I like to read it. I like to work with it. And this is when I start to make my finishing touches, my decisions, you know, that kind of stuff. Do you do much entire dry cutting? We had a question before about um, that. Um, not very much. I'm, I guess I'm more of a kind of 70, 80% kind of person, wet to dry and then finishing after that, you know? That's because you're so technical with the basic shape and you use yeah. elevation and angles. I think so. I love like quite curly hair dry. I mean, you know, not, just not always the right thing to do. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Great guys, you know, as, as Sally starts to refine the haircut here, if you have any questions or you need a recap of what she's done, she put in a beautiful baseline, the beginning, and lots of people were asking, will they be able to watch this again? Yes, you will. Yeah. It'll be saved forever on the Hairbrain Facebook page, so it's immortal. Yeah, this video is immortal. So you can watch all the way through if you've just joined us. Uh, also, wanted to let you guys know as the fire trucks go by, <laughs> we are in downtown LA, so the fun stuff's happening. It's because your hair is so hot. They're coming here. Yeah, that was a really bad joke. But anyway, if you want to join Sally at the hair happening in Vegas, can't compete with that. <laughs> What's up? Right outside the window, fire trucks. Live and direct from downtown LA. If you want to join Sally, you can head over to the SR Education website and you can go to her uh, event, which is called Hair Happening in Las Vegas, sponsored by Davinez. Um, or you can try to win a ticket, a VIP ticket, yes. by posting your own variation of a layered bob. And if you need more information on that, you can go to either Sally Rogerson on Instagram or Hairbrain, uh, Hairbrain's Instagram, Hairbrain Official, and we have all the rules and we'll be posting them. It's about a week long, it started yesterday, so make sure you get, get that work out. I'm happening. so excited to see what people are gonna send in. Yeah. And don't feel like you have to do what I've done, that's no. not what it's about, I wanna see what, you, what you're gonna do. It can be an asymmetric look, it can be curly, straight, whatever. Okay, so what'd you put in? I use the that? relaxing, Fluid from Davinus. It's a beautiful product. It's really nice to see. I remember this. Down. You know, I first started using Davinus back in 2001 yeah. when I owned a salon. It was yeah. a Davinus salon. Yeah. And um, I love, love I always it. loved relaxing fluid for Always, everything. yeah. And it's, I love how they keep evolving their packaging. Absolutely. I think that that keeps it so fun for a salon owner. Yeah. That, you know, they they're, keep putting creativity and like kind of 
making over the product line. Isn't that amazing? The biggest thing for me is the more inside products. I think that that's what I like. You know, she's starting to look very kind of Debbie Harry, I've got to say. Yeah. In a beautiful way, right? How could you not be? Okay, where's the dry? What's going on with the dry? Okay, okay, there you go. And I'm going to also use a little bit of the um, sea salt spray. Where's that from? Thank you. What's this one now? So I'm using the sea salt spray by Davinus. So I put this in everything, all the time. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about what you like with that and product? And that's just going to add some texture. You know, when I was doing more editorial work, we used to uh, have like three different water spray bottles. And we used to put one water in and sea salt, right? Yeah. And all different strengths. One with a little beer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all different strengths. So it kind of takes me back to that. And then obviously the product company started actually making it, yeah. so it was even better. Well, here's another one. Do you remember Lubriderm? We used to use a lot yes. of Lubriderm. There was no curl creams. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. You had mousse gel hairspray. I used right. to just use a lot of the conditioner from the backwash, didn't yeah. we? Right? Conditioner Pump from the backwash. Put it in. Lubriderm. Uh, I even worked with a hairdresser who used to use KY jelly on, oh, cur yeah. on curly hair, which is pretty amazing because yeah, it just it never dried up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like jerry curl. All right, so you've got some of the relaxing fluid mm -hmm. and some of the salt spray, sea yes. salt spray, and you can already see the body and texture coming out. Big thing for me is always comb it through because you've got to try and get a bit of a finish. Even though I'm going to want it to make this a bit wild, like when I dry it in looser texture, um, I think, you know, if you start off on an even playing field, I think that that really helps. Super rock and roll. I think yeah. that's, that's exactly Super it. Or lots of emojis. emojis. Yeah, lots of emojis, lots of, uh, you know, rock and roll <laughs> You know, for those of you, you know, we're going to be in L.A. a lot, actually. We're going to be back. Are you are going to be working at ISSC? Do you have anything happening? No, I don't. I have a really big teacher training program, and it's okay. our three-day, 12-month mentor thing, but I'm going to try and make it down. Um, maybe in the evening or the Saturday afternoon, I'll probably make it down there. I'll go and meet up with some people down there. Awesome. But awesome. I'm well, in LA teaching. Well, you know, Hairbrain's going to have a booth, so feel free to yeah, join I'm us. Over. And then we have a teach in on Sunday night, which is kind of a massive jam. We have to get you to do a teach in. Maybe yeah, this summer to. at Naha. We gotta get you on the schedule for Naha. Yeah. Yeah. So we do a master jam where we bring all different people together to cut hair together purely for the love of the craft. Um, it's sponsored by the Professional Beauty Association, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, and then about two weeks later, Hairbrain's coming back into town. We're what? doing a gig at the Viper Room. Oh. Yeah. So I, I, everyone was talking about how are rock you and roll. Guitar? No, no. We're what gonna are you do, gonna do? We're, we're gonna get like teaching. We get like big, fabulous name hairdressers like Sally Rogerson, oh where elevate, elevate Hair is about local hairdressers. Yeah, you know, good. maybe you've never even been on stage before, but want yeah, to. Yeah, that's cool. So we got the Viper Room. That and, is so cool. And we've got like 12 to 13, maybe a little bit more, local hairdressers from around LA and Orange oh, County. Yeah. And they, the good thing is they don't have to talk. Yes. So doing what we do, and chatting and talking, so they just get on stage and they do their thing and they have a live DJ or sometimes a band. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. So look How out for cool. Elevate Hair. Okay, so what is that diffuser? Oh my god. Uh, this is the YS Park diffuser. Um, I don't know what those amazing Japanese people do, but they just do it amazingly, don't they? Yeah, you I'm, guys sell these things? Yeah, yeah, we sell pretty much most of the YS Park line at HP Pro, and then Sally has a store as well. Yeah, we, we are, we're not doing, we sell a lot in classes, yeah. but, um, you know, mail so orders a lot. So the thing about Japanese tools that people don't understand, or at least, like you said, what is it? It's their attention to detail. The yes. thing about Japanese culture and hairdressers, so we've had these kind of sock diffusers forever, but they were always just like some styrofoam thing. And then these guys at YS Park decided to take it to the next level. It's titanium and silver mesh. And the truth is, if you put your hand in front of this, only heat comes out. It's amazing. So it doesn't make frizz. You see how it doesn't blow the hair at all. And you can really work the texture in, which is incredible. I think incredible. so many people do um, house calls now and editorial and weddings and yeah. stuff. Just amazing to have this in your bag. You do any weddings, Sally? Uh, no. no. <laughs> have you ever done a wedding? No. No. I've and never been to a wedding. Ah. I think I've been to two weddings in no. my whole life. Yeah. I, I think, you know, that's what's great about our industry. There's room for everyone. Some of us are cutters. We're cutters, aren't we? Uh, yeah. I yeah. mean, I love doing editorial, but yeah. only if it's going to be bonkers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. if it's going to be bonkers, I'm in. Yeah. I absolutely. love making things and sticking things on people's heads and, you know. 
So lots of love from the man. A lot of people want you to cut their hair. Oh, yeah. So okay. I don't know if they're regular people or hairdressers, but they want to be models for you. Oh, please. And then, uh, what, what else do we got? I do so many models. I do so many live Facebook yeah. things. They say that it's lying beautifully or laying beautifully. Laying. What would be the proper term there? Laying. Lying is lying. like when you're lying to the yeah. police. Okay, so it's laying beautifully. <laughs> it's laying beautifully. Awesome, awesome. So, you know, how long does this type of dry usually take you? Seems to go pretty quick, huh? Well, just because of this diffuser, honestly, yeah. I'm like, it's amazing. Yeah. Do you, are you finding yourself doing a lot of like round brushing and really kind of blown out hair? Um, I do sometimes, yeah. If I'm doing show work, I'm, I'm always, I, sometimes I'll just start with a really solid blow dry, and then sometimes I'll add texture in from then on top, you know? I'm the kind of person that's gonna put too much dry shampoo in and too much sea salt spray. I like it when it gets to that point, right. you know? Yeah, so again, with this product, you use like a relaxing fluid as a base, and then you put, they, they almost kind spray. of contradict each yeah, other. Yeah, they're opposite, products. aren't they? Yeah, yeah but you can you give us a little insight into the Well, product? yeah, I used the, um, I used the um, first product just to seal the cuticle and get rid of the frizz, and then I used the second product to kind of, because I like that really dry texture, so that's why I put the sea salt spray in. Now, I don't even care about styling it at this point. I'm not styling it. I'm adding texture in there. And I'm using my hands in the old fashioned way. It's kind of way. a set, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So you get it, you clump it together, kind you get the heat. Kind of rub the hair yeah. a little bit. I get some heat in it. Can we call it scrunching? Yeah, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I am going to kind of finish it in a different way. But I'm just, I'm just getting a new texture right now, you know? It really is a set, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's a form of blow drying. It's yeah. not. I'm not just getting water out. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're actually working the hair. Like grabbing it's it. Your hand becomes a tool to set it. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I think you know a lot of people will say that the best tool that you have is your hands. Oh yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So we're getting uh, to the end here, guys. Yep. Nearly there. Are you planning on doing any more cutting after it's dry? I might just do a little bit, but not much. To see if the hair kind of speaks to you a bit. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. How are you feeling under there, Marissa? Great. Some, yeah, somebody said you look very relaxed. I am very relaxed. Yeah, and yeah. how lucky am I to have Marissa in the chair? She's so beautiful. Yep. She's the epitome of an SR education layered bob, I feel like. Awesome. Awesome. We got there you any go. um, fashion cool? You can get me some of that. That'd be great. We have my wonderful assistant, Alexa, over there. So what are you thinking now? What's going through your head? What's your thought process? I am, um, oh yeah, oh, this is it. I didn't realize we had that. The dry texturizer, this is kind of a big deal. Apparently it's kind of hard to even keep in stock. It's such really? A big deal, yeah. Really? Hard. Yeah. So the dry texturizer, a little bit like a dry shampoo, but not as dusty. Like you can put more in, you know? So I'm gonna go in, put a little bit of that in. Again, I'm not styling it at the moment. Um, and then I'll come through and start to like decide what it's going to look like. Here. So it's just a little bit of extra texture, the dry texturizer yeah. from Davin. So now I'll use my hands just to kind of start to bring it down a little bit. Now obviously it's kind of woo, crazy flicky. I'm going to start to put these pieces down. The biggest thing here is I'm going to kind of flatten it, right? I'm going to flatten it. I'm going to start to kind of add a little bit more of my shape see what's going on. I'm trying to use the palms of my hands. I want to bring it down a little bit. I don't want it all big and crazy. I was just getting texture in it. Uh, just like any kind of styling, sometimes you have to do it bigger to break it First, down. Yeah. Even if it's a roller set or a round brush. Oh, yeah. So even with that natural drawing, you had to blow it up to kind of tame yeah, it down. Yeah, to bring it down. And yeah. now at this point, what I always do is actually come back through and put a little bit of water or like a little bit of... Um, you know, leaving conditioner. A little something. moisturizer. I bring yeah. it back in and then I. It just kind of reverts the texture of it. Put the texture back in yeah. once I've put it in so it stops it being too mumsy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think that's a great tip. I mean, sometimes we'll even do that with like a Denman blow dry. Yeah. I'll leaf through the hair like really quickly and it looks like a little bit mumsy and then you wet it down with something like that, the Day Day spray. Yeah, get it back in. Yeah. All I can see is. Um, it made a beautiful difference actually. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Just makes it a bit more modern. All right, nearly there, guys. Just going to do a little bit of... Zhuzhing. Zhuzhing. A little bit of freehand. That's a technical term. Zhuzhing. Zhuzhing is like... 
So my phone's died. So if any, if you see any questions coming in, Alexa, let us know. Any final questions? Do you finish I, with the wax on the ends? Would I? Um, yeah, can do. I'm not a huge fan of wax because I feel like it starts to go a bit greasy after a couple of hours. That was from Susie Goldenberg. Hi, Susie. Um, and ma'am says, so nice. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Julie says, looking awesome. I love how much positivity came in here. Oh that's my that's my favorite Brandon thing. Brandon Blustra says, so yowza, fabulous. with lots of hearts. <laughs> so much love coming in. And, and then she said, so mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> drop your scissors. <laughs> God, no, too expensive. What do you like to use for scissors? SR what? Education scissors. Uh, tell us that's what them. I like to use. Tell us about them. They are uh, made... Handmade in Japan and hand finished. Uh, I was given a pair of scissors, not shears, given a mm -hmm. pair of scissors by a friend of mine. Um, he came over from Japan. He gave me a gift, he gave me these amazing pair of scissors, and there was nothing on them, no name, nothing. And I was like, where the hell are these from? You know? It took me like five years to kind of get him to tell me where they were from oh, and to track secret. them down. Oh, yeah. Japanese secret. Absolutely. And then eventually I tracked down, you know, the factory and now we have them made for us. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. Is it, isn't Last it nice forever. To, to kind of uh, make your own tools? Yeah. You know, at a certain point, if you love the craft, you, yeah. you, an extension of it is making your own things. And yeah. I think it's a wonderful feeling and you should have a lot of pride. Oh, absolutely. You know, I feel really good about it. Um, it's just really nice to get Melanie to Melanie Gale point. says, gorgeous cut, definitely something I would try. Cool. Definitely. You know, I'm, I'm quite a commercial person. You know, I definitely have been wild and wacky in my life, and yep. some days I am. But honestly, um, you know, I'm kind of into what we do in the salon, supporting the salon stylists. That's kind of what we do every, and every day. And Tommy Malone is saying, amazing. I love you. Well, thank you, Tommy. I'm saying amazing too. So happy to see this transformation. Again, we start. You can watch this from the beginning at any time and review all the questions and answers. We started out here with Marissa has a, almost a one length <laughs> cut, and then Sally showed how to bring the length up and layer it. And here's a beautiful end result. And we're going to get uh, a little final. So let us know your final words, Sally. Yeah. Close so it out for us. This is Marissa. She has, um, you know, had kind of my version of a layered bob right now. I'm really into just a bit of texture, keeping it really kind of loose, and um, just want that slightly late 70s vibe, that slight Debbie Harry kind of feeling. Did my outline first, and then I went through with a little bit of layering, a bit more through the top of the hair, kept a bit more weight in the outline, and then I did some channeling through this front area. So simply worked the front, Went into my layer, short to long, left a few long and short pieces out, channeled through, and then did a bit of freehand afterwards. And uh, yeah, that's my final look. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, I appreciate you all tuning in. Awesome. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We'll see you soon. It's someplace else doing some amazing thing for craft hairdressers. Love you. Peace.